Today we're going to take a look at Star Trek Phase 2, the Star Trek that never was. After watching this video, please remember to check out our channel for these other great videos. Also, please be sure to like this video so that YouTube will offer it to more people. Lastly, please consider becoming a VIP supporter via our Patreon site using the link below in the description. Now, when they decided to bring back Star Trek as Star Trek Phase 2, they were immediately met with a challenge. Namely, that Leonard Nimoy did not want to come back as Spock. Leonard Nimoy was currently in the midst of a rather heated battle with Paramount over the fact that they were licensing his likeness as Spock to advertisers without actually paying him any royalties. So they wrote a new Vulcan character. The character's name was Zahn. And he was a young Vulcan, 100% Vulcan, not a hybrid this time. He would be the science officer, and he would be played by an actor by the name of David Gautreaux. We have three clips that we're going to be taking a look at with David. Silent one that we just saw on the screen here, and two more with vocals. Now, once that David learned that Zahn was not actually going to be a television role, but was actually going to be transitioned into Star Trek The Motion Picture and would have a very small part. He asked to be written out of the storyline, so they did. But they did keep David in for one scene. He is Commander Branch. He is the person that is sending a distress signal to the USS Enterprise from the science station Epsilon 9, which is about to be destroyed by an immense, unknown menace. For now, let's just sit back and watch the next two clips, complete with audio. My readings seem to indicate some sort of sensor unit attached to each device. I don't feel an attack is the logical approach at this moment. If you will allow me to take further readings, I could... Now, in these production test scenes on the engineering deck, we see a couple of things I need to comment on right up front. First is the costumes. Notice the male costume. And you can see down in the lower corner here, the other inset picture of the man in white. William Moore Tice was the costume designer for Gene Rodberry from the original Star Trek television series all the way through the 1970s and all of Gene's other projects as well. Now, the photograph that we just saw was from Genesis 2, and in it, you saw a very similar toga-like utility vest. And I don't think they really would have worked out all that well in Star Trek Phase 2 as time went on. And as it is, we can be thankful we never saw that style again. Now, what we're getting ready to see now is the first of two separate takes showing various content differences. In this first take, he comes over, he hands her the book, she hands him the engineering device, and then we get a shot through the floor showing him walk across the floor against the backdrop of the vertical warp core, and then the scene ends. Now we see the same scene again, but with a slight difference. Instead of it cutting to the below deck shot of the vertical warp core, it's actually going to extend their conversation. There's a slight blip right about here. There you go. And they continue on talking. Notice the vertical warp core would also show up in Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, in this clip, we see interactivity in the bridge consoles. A couple buttons are pushed and things react. The original cast mentioned in Star Trek The Motion Picture that the bridge consoles were interactive. I'm not quite sure who this is. It might be Joseph Jennings. He was the art director for Star Trek Phase 2. Herman Zimmerman didn't come along for at least another, like, 10 years after that. And Mickelson was much younger than he was. But maybe somebody out there can let me know because this is somewhat of a mini mystery. Now, next up is the late Persis Cambada, who played Ilea in Star Trek The Motion Picture. She also was to play that character in Phase 2, and you're seeing a couple of makeup tests here. First, they have her in Command Gold, and notice the headdress on her head. The Deltons had ornamental headwear. She's wearing, I believe, a skull cap here. She would actually be shaved for the movie, but for the tests, obviously not. And she's taking direction from someone off stage who's basically just asking her to do a runway walk. And as you watch her turn and walk down towards the wall, you'll see what I mean. You can see the way her hands sway, and when she turns around, they spread out. There's a reason for that. At the age of 16 years old, Persis Cambada was Miss India in the 1965 Miss Universe pageant. Now, as we watch her in this last clip, we noticed a few differences. One, she's in engineering red instead of command gold. And in all honesty, I think the lighter color suits her better. The dark color does not suit her very well. The headdress she's wearing looks like it could actually be designed to fit inside the other headdress. Not sure if that was designed to be that way. And her smile looks a little bit sardonic because in this clip, She's not showing her teeth like she was in the other clip. So what you see on the right is the final effect two years later from Star Trek The Motion Picture. I just felt that I needed to show this because those were the earliest costume and makeup tests. And this is obviously a publicity shot from the finished product so that you can appreciate the difference in artistry. 